How did people respond to your book when you initially put this one out, the universe, a universe from nothing, why there's something rather than nothing. And when you first published it, do people love it, hate it? Uh, is this because your research destroys the last bastion of God, as I've heard you say? Well, look, I mean, there were a lot of different reactions. Uh, and But I was surprised at the uh, popularity. It became a New York Times bestseller in the first week, actually. Uh, and and I, that surprised me. Um, one always hopes for those kind of things, but uh, but but I, w I was surprised that that happened. And and there were, I think the point is that there people had been waiting for a long time for an argument. I mean, the last ba it is you know, and I think I don't know if the, Richard Dawkins said this or I did, but it is the last bastion of religion. I mean, for a long time, um, uh, religious. Uh, uh, arguments you know said well the existence of life is evidence of god but then evolution demonstrated the diversity of life could come by natural natural means and so the last uh the last question that would seem hard to answer is how do you get this universe of a hundred and a hundred billion galaxies each containing a hundred billion stars if from nothing clearly you need some supernatural shenanigans and the remarkable thing is you don't and i think that's that's certainly worth celebrating and the fact what I, I look, I, I don't write books, and I, I don't generally do arguments to try and argue against pseudoscience. It, it, I mean, I think it's important to do that, but I really try and get people excited about the real universe because that's so much more interesting than the myth and superstition. And so I wrote that book to describe the amazing revolutions that have taken place in cosmology in the last fifty years, and to get people excited about those. But a corollary of that is is that um, that we now have a plausible mechanism to understand how you could get a universe of 100 billion galaxies, each containing 100 billion stars, from nothing mm. with no supernatural shenanigans. In fact, the, the, the really remarkable point is that if you asked, how, what would a universe created from nothing by physical laws, quantum mechanics, etc., that lasted 4 billion years look like? And the answer is it would look virtually identical to the universe in which we live. Now, that doesn't prove it, but it certainly makes it plausible. And that's remarkable. And it's remarkable for a variety of reasons, because 30 or 40 years ago, we couldn't have even asked that question. It would have seemed like a non-scientific question. And the answer is, now we have a whole series of steps in cosmology, discoveries that have changed the way we think about the universe, as well as theoretical arguments that make it plausible. And I think that's remarkable. Mm. Well said. Yeah, there's a bunch that we're going to be talking about today that's probably going to be over your head. It was over my head. Your book was something else. I have to admit, like I, I could keep up to you, like with you up to a certain point that I was like, I need a visual on this. I, I'm like, this is well, it's a short. 